Join me, if you will, in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning here at verse 22. And let's look at this picture. We're going to have to paint with some broad strokes because of the time limitations. But I want you to see this picture that we're intended to paint for our culture. Some things that our culture needs to see from us and needs to hear from us. And oh, by the way, our culture is desperate to see this from us and hear this from us. Why? Because marriages are falling apart. We have a marital wasteland all around us in our culture. It's not working. And our culture is desperate for some answers. Now, they may not like the answers that we have to give. However, God's the one who designed marriage. He knows how to make it work. Look beginning in verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now, let me say something briefly here about this passage of Scripture. Number one, I know that this is perhaps the least popular passage of Scripture in the New Testament for many people. If you can't say amen, you ought to say ouch. It's the least popular passage of Scripture. We just don't like this passage of Scripture. It's in there and we just don't like it. We want it to go away. It's just not right. And the reason it's not a popular passage of Scripture is twofold. Number one, we don't understand what it means. And secondly, we don't keep reading. Amen. We don't understand what it means and we don't keep reading. What do you mean we don't keep reading? Here, here's what I want you to do, ladies. I want you to look at that little paragraph right there. It's that little old measly paragraph that has to do with what you're called to do in this context. You show me how big that is in your Bible. About that, it's about that big right there in mine. Anybody, ladies, ladies, what you got? What you got? About that? Okay. Now, look at the next paragraph, which begins, husbands. You see that one, verse 25, where the first word is husbands? Why don't you show me how big that paragraph is? Yeah, yeah, you got to keep reading. You got to keep reading. First thing I want you to understand is this, that submission is not a matter of value. It's a matter of order. This is not about the value of women. God is not saying that women are less valuable. Men are more valuable. This is a matter of order. Anything with two heads is a monster. Amen. You either need to kill it or put it behind glass and charge people to come see it. Okay. <laughs> God has called men to headship in marriage. I make no apologies for that, none whatsoever, because I know what that means. And it's not something, I, I assure you, that fills me with pride. Not at all. It's something that overwhelms me as I understand it in its context. You see, there's this drama being played out here. And there are many who would argue that based on that paragraph that somehow God thinks less of women. Women, let me help you understand something. There's a drama being played out here. You get to play the part of the one who was redeemed. We get to play the guy who got killed. Here's the other thing. It doesn't say women submit to all men. That's not what mine says. Yours say that? Uh, no, uh, that, that's, not, that's not in there. Maybe over in Second Hesitations or somewhere it says that, but he doesn't see it here in Ephesians, okay? And again, I, you know, I had a young woman, I see the, the young people in here, and I've had this conversation before with a young man. A young man come up to me and said, hey, you know, I'm having problems. Me and my girlfriend, we're having problems. What problems are you and your girlfriend having? Well, she just, she just won't submit to me. Well, what makes you think she's supposed to submit to you? Well, doesn't the Bible say that she's supposed to submit to you? No, nope, not unless you put a ring on her finger, walk her down the aisle, and say your vows. Then she's supposed to submit to you, because then you would be her husband. But right now, you're trying to make her your concubine, and not only should she not submit to you, but unless you marry her, she needs to dump you. It doesn't say that. We have an epidemic of unprotected women in our culture being used and abused by men. That is not the picture that the Bible paints. Here's the other thing I want you to understand. The Bible doesn't say, men, make your women to submit to you. It's not what the Bible teaches. Wives, 
You submit yourself to your husbands. Well, why are all these things important? Because what's the world out there saying? The world is sort of turning their nose up at this idea of biblical submission because they don't get it. They think it's about women being worth, le- worth less than men. It, it, they think it's about women, men, you know, sort of domineering over women. It's not the picture. Wives, you submit yourself to your husbands, which is why I tell young men, I warn young men too. Say, young men, you run across a woman who's not submissive. Well, wait a minute, I thought you said she doesn't have to submit to me. No, she doesn't have to submit to you. Well, then how am I going to know if she's submissive? Watch her with her daddy. Amen, lights. Watch her with her mother and her father. Does she honor her mother and her father? Does she submit to her mother and her father? Now, if she does not honor and submit to her mother and her father who gave her life and food, what makes you think she's going to submit to you? So you watch her. And if she won't submit, run. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. A man who marries an unsubmissive woman will be a miserable man. And here's why. There's nothing you can do to make her submit. If she wants to stand up and be the head, what are you going to do? Arm wrestle her for it? You'll be a miserable man. Well, there are ways that people try to get around this. And for the sake of time, let me just deal with a couple of these. So one of the ways that people try to get around this is they say, wait a minute, brother, I understand that you, you're reading that there and wives submitting to their husbands and all this sort of stuff. But, you know, that verse 21 thing, you kind of ignored that verse 21 thing. Verse 21 says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Can we just for once and for all deal with this? Strap yourself in. This is going to go quickly. People make this argument about mutual submission. There are just a few problems with that line of argumentation. Problem number one, the word that's used here, the word hupotasso, that word submission, it's actually a military term. It means for one to rank oneself beneath another. The term that's used does not allow for mutual submission. Secondly, the context does not allow for mutual submission. You know, when you run to verse 21, in order to explain verse 22, you run into a small problem. And that small problem is this. Verse 21 is the end of a paragraph, not the beginning. Which means you're out of context. So if you want to get in context, you've got to go all the way to the beginning of the paragraph, which is verse 15. Now, when you get to verse 15, you see a pattern. And here's the pattern. You see three contrasts. On the third contrast, telescopically, it opens up into three commands. On the third command, telescopically, it opens up into three contexts. Follow me. Look carefully, verse 15, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. So there, don't be unwise, but wise. Contrast number one. How about contrast number two, verse 17? Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What about contrast number three, verse 18? Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. That's the third contrast. On the third contrast, you get three commands. How are you going to be filled with the Spirit? Glad you asked. Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. Here's command number two. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Command number three. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. On the third command, you get three contexts. Where do you submit? Wives to husbands. Beginning here at verse 22 through the end of the chapter. Context number two, children to parents, chapter six, verses one through four. Context number three, slaves to master, six, five through nine. Verse 21 is not the umbrella for verse 22. It's the umbrella for verse 22 all the way through six, nine.